girl Shalane. I'm back today with another video. In today's video, we're going to discuss the IRS transcripts because some people are having some discrepancies where they're not updating. We're also going to talk about SSI and Social Security and how this relates to child tax credit as well as tax refunds. Then we're going to talk about a reduced refunds because a lot of you have not received your correct amount. We have divorce, we have IRS tax codes, and a whole lot more, my darling. So if you want to know what is going on in the lovely world of taxes, then you come to the right place. Stay tuned. Your girl's got you covered. Now, if this is your first time tuning into my channel, hi, hello, hey, friend. My name is Shalay, and here on this channel, we discuss shopping, saving, and everything in between. I would love to have you a part of my internet family. Super easy. Click the big old red subscribe button down below when you're in just like that. And while you're at it, go ahead and give me a like, especially if you love me reporting this content on taxes for you because, you know, I can definitely keep it in heavy rotation. Now, if you are not an Amazon Prime member, you can try out Amazon Prime free for 30 days. You don't have to enter no credit card information or anything. All you have to do is click the link above or in the description box and you in there. That's it. All right. So let's go ahead and kick things off because it is President's Day. And of course, the IRS would go ahead and update transcripts right in the smack middle of President's Day after they told us not to call, right? So a lot of you guys have went online and you've noticed that February 22nd is the date that you would get your uh, money. So it's coming to you now. According to the IRS, if you have used the earned income tax credit or additional child tax credit, then you should have your refunds deposited on or about, I would say, February 22nd, but definitely before February 27th. Now, of course, it all depends on which bank you have, what company you use to file, because a lot of people did receive their um, refunds this weekend, but majority of you guys will receive your refunds on February 22nd. Now, of course, on the IRS website, they did say that they will update on February 17th the projected deposit dates, as well as the where's my refund tool. It should answer most of the questions that you guys needed. Because remember, it was like, don't call us. Do not call us on President's Day. And a lot of people were saying, well, Shalay, I received my refund. If indeed the child tax credit does pass through Senate, how would I know if I'm going to get an additional payment? And the IRS said that they already have a built-in tool that will pretty much trigger and say, hey, you are due additional money. So you don't have to do anything at all. Pretty much spend your refund. Enjoy yourself, my darling. And no matter what happens in Congress, if it does mean that it's approved, then more than likely eligible taxpayers would receive an additional $200 per child in refunds when filing this year, $300 more per child next year, and then $400 more the year after that, okay? So I hope that answered a lot of your questions. Now, the next order of businesses we have where some people have received a reduced refund and they're like, girl, what happened? I only got a portion of what I was supposed to receive. This can happen for a lot of reasons, right? It could be an overpayment. It could be you owe past due child support, student loans, um, any like non-tax debt, state income tax debt, or any obligations. Like if you had like unemployment debt or unemployment compensation debt that you owe to the state, but you can contact the agency that you have the debt with, or you should receive a letter that will be coming to you and saying, hey, why you did not receive the correct amount of your refund. But I'll go ahead and submit this because they do have it. I think it's topic 153 on the IRS website. Now, with 2024 tax season in full swing, a lot of your questions were regarding like SSI, supplemental security income, and a lot of beneficiaries was wondering, should I, should I file taxes? And I'm going to be honest with you guys, right? There's no one size fit all for that. I mean, if it's worth that you're going to get some more money, then yeah, I would definitely say file. But your SSI benefits, they are non-taxable. So that means that the money that you receive it is not considered earned income. Because it's not earned income, it is designed to help those with limited income, certain disabilities, and more. So although filing your taxes, it is not required, there are other reasons that you may want to consider filing, but the biggest reason would be potentially to get a tax refund because that means that's 
extra money that you would receive. Now, you also might be eligible if you file for the child tax credit or the earned income tax credit as well. But the best thing I would say is I would refer you to an accountant that can, you know, help you navigate that as well. So if you receive SSI, you are eligible for the additional tax credits which it should not affect the amount of SSI money that you receive. And then you could claim the child tax credit, assuming that you meet all the qualification, meaning like you have a child that's 17 years old or younger, then you could receive up to that $2,000 per year, depending on your income. But I wouldn't just be so quick to move. Everybody's case is different. So when you guys are asking me that, I'm like, hold up. I don't want to tell you to file. And then... It comes back and you owe or get kicked off your benefits. Now, we know in January, the Social Security Administration office, they usually um, send a letter out to recipients or you can go online and you can look up. And pretty much, but if you receive SSI, you don't receive those letters. You can contact the Social Security Administration and, you know, they can actually send you a letter. Um, you can call them and get one as well. But usually that letter will tell you um, pretty much like what was your net amount of Social Security benefits that you received from the Social Security Administration. So it does have that. And usually I want to say in that letter, it is reported on box five. It's on the form like SSA 1099. So you can do that as well. So that's pretty much when it comes to my Social Security. I also had questions regarding like divorce and filing taxes and if the parents are not currently married, but you guys share custody of the child. Well, only one person is eligible to claim the child as a dependent and receive the associated benefits such as the child tax credit. Now, typically, okay, I'm not in your business, all right? But typically, the custodial parent, which means the one that has the child the most number of nights throughout the year, that's the one who is usually eligible to claim the child as a dependent, and thus they're going to receive the child tax credit or stimulus check or anything else that comes from it. However, there is a way for the non-custodial parent to receive the credit instead, but this still would require approval from the custodial parent. So meaning like the custodial parent, if they're like, you, you know what, you've been doing right, we're just gonna rotate the child every other year, the custodial parent can file a form which is 8332, which will allow the non-custodial parent to claim the child tax credit for that specific year. So this will allow like non-married parents where you can alternate who gets the credit each year. So one get it this year, the next person get it that year. As long as that custodial parent will have to submit that form every single year that they decide to do that. Now, the non-custodial parent who will claim the child this year and get the child tax credit, they will get that, but they will not have the child as a dependent because technically the custodial parent still has the child majority of the time. So I hope that helps, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and move on to these transaction codes because a lot of people are receiving transaction codes when they go to look at their transcript as well as they're seeing some um, different codes that they're receiving in the mail as well. And these are just some popular ones. So like the IRS transaction code 826. That means that part of your tax refund was used to pay that existing tax debt as well. Now, we also have like an 846. That signals that a refund is coming to you more than likely. If there's any interest that has been approved by the IRS, you'll receive that as well. Then we have like um, transaction code 570, which that can mean that there's a hold on your account that's preventing the IRS from finalizing your refund. For this one, I'm going to tell you guys like you should wait and ask for additional information because we don't know why you have that. Um, They have a, a code 971. This means that the IRS is asking you for additional information on an issue as well. It's typically related to code 570 as well. Now, every code that you may have or receive, you can actually go to the IRS website because they have the IRS codes on their website, but I'll put in some more typically that I've seen on tax returns. Now, the IRS is expanding as well their free filing program to three more states. So on Friday, they did announce where they will implement the test phase 
um, of the program in Arizona, New York, and Massachusetts, all states with an income tax. So this test pilot can be carried out to a total of 12 states. And in a statement last week, more than a dozen taxpayers from the initial testing phase group, they had about 1,200 people that participated in this program. So early users report that they were satisfied with using the direct file as well as like the customer service representatives that they have interacted with through the live chat. Let me know, have you guys tried the direct file? I know a lot of the lawmakers were not happy about it because they said it undercuts like you know, H&R Block and TurboTax as well. But a lot of people saying that it's easy to use, um, it's very straightforward. And a lot of people have had like much success when filing their taxes in less than 30 minutes. Now you guys know that pretty much I have about 16 weeks of H&R Block training. So some of the questions that you are asking down in the comments, if I don't know, I definitely will refer you back to an accountant or, you know, like, girl, that's a one-off situation because everybody's, you know, situation is different. But a lot of times I do respond back to your comments. So if you do have a comment, I'll sit up here and put a link to where you can go and view it or I'll find the information. So definitely comment down below. But yeah, what do you think about the IRS pretty much releasing all that information on the transcript only right smack down in the middle of president's day where you know most people are gonna want to have questions like wait why did they get their refunds and i didn't get mine because i i mean i would do the exact same thing but don't worry if your return says the 22nd some people probably will start receiving their money tomorrow, depending on who you bank with. And then the rest of you will receive it on the 22nd. Now, I had a few more questions where people said they had filed early and they don't have any status or any information um, regarding that they even filed. There's no updates as well. I've been searching the IRS frequently asked questions as well as um, just different information to see what happened to your transcript or what happened on why it's saying that you haven't filed. And what I can pretty much find on TurboTax, it was stating to call the company that you filed with or just maybe taking the IRS just a little bit longer to go ahead and process it, but not to be worried at all because I know a lot of people said they filed in January, but it still doesn't have any information um, on the system at all. So this is all we have guys as you can see I'm doing my best right. I'm doing my best to get you those answers Ask the questions down below Let me know what date do you have that your money will be to you or did you already get it this weekend? And I'll keep you updated regarding the child tax credit and hopefully we'll know something from the Senate They are on recess until I want to say it's either the 26th of this month So the earliest that we would know is probably the 26th, but I mean, they're, they're out, right? So I doubt they're going to come back and that's going to be the first order of business. I would say we probably won't know anything to around the first week of March. But the great thing is the IRS said that whatever happens, they're prepared to get us our money as soon as possible. So that's all I have. Please like, comment, subscribe, grab you some Amazon Prime, absolutely free. Ask those questions down below. And um, yeah, this is all I have. I will talk to you later, Gator. Bye, guys.